Hello, this is Eric of Nopaos and welcome to my review of the iPassport Mini Wireless Keyboard. So this works with a smart TV, PC and a bunch of other devices. It says on the back Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, mobile phone, smart TV, Android TV box, PCs, notebooks, netbook tablets, Android phones, even iPhones. Expect very limited compatibility. Now one thing that little keyboard has is multi-touch functionality and that is pretty cool that we have that. Now in the box itself, the one side is USB type A, the other side is micro USB, which we can see right here. And it also has an extension side. So if you have a USB cable and you need it longer and you need to extend it, that's an extension side. So you can actually extend your cable longer than it is. So the length of this cable, tip to tip, is about 117 centimeter, or 46 inches in length. So just shy of four feet. Not bad, especially if you can extend it, as this allows an extension to another cable. Now also included is a nice instruction book. You can see it's English and Chinese. And it has quite a bit of useful information, including compatibility, what the buttons do, and even how to connect it to different devices. So if I switch through my devices, I look at the little swirly thing. This is the easiest way to do it. So you don't have to worry about going between each one. Bluetooth. So function key, the little swirly thing. I'll press again. Then that's the 2.4 gigahertz receiver. Press again, I'm back to Bluetooth, blue light. When it's charging, this light is red. And one really cool thing is if I hold the function button and the little light bulb right here, we can change the color of the keyboard. And let's say when I let go of the keys, it's going to turn off the lights to save power. Then if I press another key again, it turns the lights back on. So that saves you power. And I'm going to turn that off by pressing the button yet again. And now the lights are off again. So inside it looks like we have a battery and we have the USB 2.4 gigahertz receiver. If you use Bluetooth, you don't need to use the receiver. I usually prefer to use a receiver just because you have the reliability, especially if you don't have Bluetooth already in your computer system. But if you want to save a port, use a Bluetooth and it should be just fine. And by the way, if you're looking to save money, I may have a discount code. So look in the description below, even if I don't have it right away. And if this video was posted right away, check back again. You never know. Maybe in a week's time after this video, you might save even more money. And another item I reviewed, and now we have a discount code. I reviewed this on Not Bios Studio. So if you want 30% off, yeah, 30% off this already affordable iPhone microphone system, check my description. I'll have the discount code in the description. So check that out and get yourself a great deal. Now I decided to check to see if this battery is removable. And guess what? It is. And I see something here. We could add our own two AAA batteries if we chose to. And here's the battery and some stats. 800 milliamp hours, 3.7 volts. So you can either replace the battery if you need to one day. It's rechargeable. Or you can add your own. Let's say if the battery's running low, what's going to happen is keyboard's going to flash. Even if the lights are not on or lights will be on, it'll be flashing then that means the battery is running low and it needs a recharge, so yeah. And for charging itself, when you charge it, it's gonna be charging through your ports down here, not your batteries here. So behind me, I have one of my old videos here that I just uploaded. A competition. When it comes to the... And I can play pause it just like that. Interesting, okay. Let's play, let's play. Mute. And Unmute. Be now that is pretty cool. Does the search do anything? Oh, I just brought up a search bar. Now if I want to turn down and up the volume, I can actually use the volume up on here, up and down. Lovely. If I want to press beyond enter and control delete, it'll bring me this menu where I can actually change the settings. And let's mute that. Okay, so now if I bring that menu up, I can now go to task manager and I can end a task or whatnot here. So that is cool. 
And let's see if it turns the volume back on. Stop. Well, that works. I press the stop key right there. And there you can see. And it stopped. Now, if it's playing a Blu-ray movie, this would have a little more functionality than YouTube. But it's cool that it has some basic functionality. Now, let's try some typing. What I want to do is actually record the computer screen so you can see what's happening. Okay, now I have this keyboard here. And I want to go to, let's say, camera. Typed it in. Uh, sure, let's go to camera conspiracy. Conspiracy. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press enter. And now I can find that. Now I can press the arrow down key and I can go through whatever video. Now I want to see if I can choose a video. That's the other problem. Oh, wow. Okay, the little part that says I passport, the little screen, it has a little, oh wow, I'm going to have to show that on camera so we actually know what's happening. I found I can use this as a touchpad. You can even see the screen light up. It actually works the touchpad. So if you were like using a laptop kind of idea, you can scroll around the screen on my own computer. And if I want to scroll up and down the page, I go like this. You can see it scrolling right behind me. Let's say I'm using YouTube, which I do a lot of. I can scroll up or down using this. But you may notice there's this, but it's not always the way you think of it. We've got this little scroll thing and it's not necessarily right where you see it. You go put your finger along the edge, the leading edge, see? So right in the corner to scroll up and down. So now I'm going to press shift and I'll press the add symbol. And that works perfectly well for typing your add symbol. So shift and your other key for the alternate functions. Let's say you have a smart TV and it doesn't use fire sticks or any other USB drive per se you might be totally out of luck, despite it being a smart TV, unless of course it has Bluetooth or something to connect an external device. So there's that. And if it does work, it's going to be mostly remote for scrolling through the smart menus itself, and not so much depending, controlling the TV. Compatibility with devices listed is not always full compatibility. However, with PC, this does work really good, and this might be my new remote. And yes, I've tried many different remotes for PC. One of the ones I actually have is an Air remote. Now, I tried this for Xbox Series X, so the newest Xbox at this time. I can type in things on the keyboard, on the system, but I can't scroll through all the menus except for maybe Netflix and all the movies on Netflix. So that's kind of limiting. And I can't change the volume. Here's another one I reviewed, but this one's discontinued. It works like an air cursor, but I don't have a full keyboard on this one. So it makes it kind of limited versus this one where I can do everything as a touchpad. This has no touchpad. Now, how does this work with my Android phone? Well, very limited. Now I want to see how difficult or easy this is to connect to my mobile phone. So I'm going to turn the power on and I have to turn the Bluetooth on. So let's see which one the Bluetooth is. I believe that's this little swirly thing. And let's see if I go to pair a new device. Do we see this here yet? Bluetooth keyboard. Pair. Hell heck yeah. Okay, it was just that simple. Home key. Takes me to home screen. Interesting. Okay, what I want to do is I want to type a message. Hello. How are you? Is it typing? But typing a letter so far is still no go. Now, when it comes to using this, I can use a cursor on YouTube. I can press play and pause. So you have the play pause button. Oh, and maybe I should jump the volume a bit, right? Scene worlds to get to first. Let's pause again. Unpause. And if I want to mute it. A while ago. Let's press the mute Jean. button. And there I go. 
So there's that that you can control. And if I want to control the volume up or down, I can do so. You can Study see my volume under the microscope, including a beautiful brick that it... Just think of it this way. It's like a computer keyboard. So if you have a smart multimedia keyboard and you can do stuff with it, basically the compatibility should, I believe, be similar. Does a keyboard that's made for PC work? Well, it should be about the same, but it has a USB type A connection. So if your Mac doesn't have that, well, it's not gonna work. Okay, how about Bluetooth? It's still gonna function then like a keyboard made for PC. So keep that in mind. Now for PC, it should be widely compatible. So that shouldn't be a problem. If a multimedia keyboard works, this should work. This is Eric of Not BIOS, and I hope you enjoyed my review of the iPassport Mini Bluetooth keyboard. Of course, it's 2.4 gigahertz with a USB receiver, plus Bluetooth compatible. If your device has Bluetooth, you can connect it. And of course, it's a matter of device compatibility and device. Windows PCs, generally 7, 8, 10, should even work with 11. This is Eric of Not BIOS, and have yourselves a most wonderful day. This is not BIOS, Tech and Hardware.